positive as well. From the negative terrain, now move into uh, the positive terrain. Well, let's get in Jay uh, Bala, who joins us of Catch the Chaos. Hi, Jay. Good afternoon. How are you feeling about the markets? You've been a little bit cautious, I think so. And suddenly, we have pulled back close to 500 points on the Nifty itself. Do you think there's further scope for downside on the Nifty? Uh, hi, Nigel. Good to be here. Um, so, yeah, that's what I'm thinking. And uh, the markets uh, were supposed to rally from the, the low, low levels that we saw today. The fact that mark markets broke the uh, in intraday morning low has completed a short-term structure. It, it, it has a very uh, important bearing for the um, uh, direction for the next few weeks. I expect the markets to bounce somewhere close to 22,400 to 22,500. And I expect the market to roll over from that point onwards. And, uh, it, it, and we're still above a, a critical uh, medium-term supports at about uh, 22, um, sorry, 21,710. Um, I expect that to be taken out. Once that's taken out, uh, the markets are likely to slip into a medium-term correction. So while the structure is pointing to a break of 22, uh, 170, um, sorry, 21,710, um, it's not yet done that, but I'm anticipating that to happen. So watch out for important uh, resistance at about 22,400, 22,500. So, with intermittent bounces or straight, in, uh, you know, in this in this current phase only, straight down to twenty one seven hundred or so, the low. Yeah. See, if you look at the market as it is, you know, it's already giving important clues. For the last three sessions, we've got three yeah. gap downs, and only one of the gap downs have got filled. That too, very briefly. So, and if you look at the IT sector, that's also you know uh, getting hammered now, and I've been slightly negative on it, and been warning that the new highs of TCS. Was a, sh a shake, I mean, uh, undependent or uh, unreliable move, uh, you know, and that's the reason why we're seeing IT sector below 34,200. I've been saying the IT sector runs a real risk of breaking the 2022 low of 26,100 and change. So, you know, the IT sector is now joining the FNCG, which has been under underperforming. So, if one more sector joins this uh, market on the lower side, we'll have a medium term correction and we'll have a much deeper drop to come. Through. Uh, by the way, on Thursday, we have both Infosys and Bajaj Auto reporting numbers. Infi is the top loser on the you know, benchmark ahead of their numbers. This week, it's seen a correction of close to about 4.5%. The key number to watch, two of them, one is revenue growth in the current quarter, and that's seen declining by 0.5% on a sequential basis, constant currency. And the second one will be their FI25 guidance, and that's broadly seen between 2 to 6%. The company will give a 2 percentage point range, but there are some who believe that it could be 2 to 4%. There are some who believe it could be 3 to 5 And then there are those who believe the company will guide for 4 to 6%. So anything between 2 to 6% will perhaps uh, you know, go down, um, you know, will sit with uh, the street in terms of expectations. Bajaj Auto is the other one, and this one's had a fantastic run, 74% in the past six months, and very recently the company had hit its uh, you know all-time high level. These are the numbers, 24% top-line growth, uh, driven by a volume growth of 24%, margin expansion of 50 basis points to 19.8%, driven by lower input costs, improved mix and operating leverage benefits. And this will drive a 30% jump in the company's profitability. So these are some numbers you should have um, you know, before they report their numbers. Uh, Jay, um, you spoke about IT. Any particular trading ideas that you see on the way down? Any sell calls? Late, and, I, and I'm anticipating a little bit of bounce to come through. We can use that bounce to you know, short uh, IT sector. And, uh, you know, in fact, I have a long call on the IT names. It's a dangerous long because um, uh, in intellect design, I'm positive on it, but it's only for the short term. But as long as the intellect design can hold 960, I think it's still got unfinished up more somewhere close to 1280. But since the overall sector is negative, this is trying to swim against the tide. So be a bit watchful and don't get too aggressively long on this. Reduce greatly, uh, in, in, uh, lower than 50% uh, of your normal allocation and hold the stop of 964 objective. Okay, all right. Uh, Jay, just hold that thought. You know, I just want to make a point on Exide. It should come up for you on the screen, and my director will quickly pull up Exide, the cash market stock, as well as the futures. Now, there is a big discount if you look at it in terms of the futures. The futures are at around 452, approximately, while the cash market is at around 465 rupees, or the shots are getting squeezed out out here. If I'm not mistaken, I think it's in the FNO ban as well. So that's clearly there's a big surge that we're seeing in the cash market. It appears that there is genuine cash market buying out here. And the shots will get squeezed out. There's a big discount as we speak, closer on 10 rupees. The future split should come up for you 
at some point of time, I think uh, my director will just pull that up uh, as well. That's what we're talking about. Big, big uh, difference out there. Nearly a 15 rupee div uh, difference is what we're seeing out there. Well, Jay, uh, I wanted your view on, uh, you know, on some of these global monitorables that we're looking at, Brent crude prices, the dollar index, as well as gold. Uh, where are these three headed? Uh, yeah, Nigel, important uh, 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 macro to observe. You know, uh, Brent now been pointing out that you know uh, on, on the first of March, I uh, posted on my wall saying that you know um, are the markets anticipating a geopolitical event, and the markets did uh, you know uh, signal that that uh, what's ha happened in the last week, and the Brent both varieties of Brent still have unfinished up move. Uh, but it's, the momentum isn't as strong as you know as it was uh, last week. But it's still uh, and it looks like an unfinished up move. Uh, for the WTI, I have an objective of 91, and for Brent, I have an objective close to 96. Um, so uh, when it comes to the dollar, you know, uh, the, the, as I pointed out last week, you know, be careful because the yields, uh, commodities, stocks, and and the dollar were moving up together, and one of them were to uh, uh, you know uh, break. And it's, it's, it seems the equities that's uh, broken down and the, uh, um, the main, main indices in the US, Dow Jones, S&P and the NASDAQ are below the March lows and it's signaling a possible turn down here. So watch for a counter trend bounce. Uh, so we still got, got pending confirmation to come through. Uh, so when it comes to gold and silver, in the, in the extreme short term, they are uh, uh, you know slightly frothy. So that could be a short term shock, a very, very short term shock but they still got uh, higher highs to come through. And I mean, short-term stock, both gold and silver could drop somewhere about 7 to 10% in the short term, but that will still be a, a corrective decline. Uh, but the important thing here is dollar has still got much, much higher uh, levels to come through. The USD JPY, which is at a 34-year high, has still got another 6.5% to 8% upsides to work with. So we can imagine where the dollar index is heading. Mm. I mean, as the rupee is uh, actually more, a lot of Asian currencies are at lows, right? I mean, uh, multi-month lows. Uh, the rupee, of course, is something we've been highlighting as well. Rima was talking about uh, IT, in Infosys, etc. But it's mid-cap IT as well. Look at Persistent, Oracle Financial Services, uh, CoForge. You know, they're all down between 2, 2.5, 3%. Uh, so the mid-cap IT pack is, uh, seems to be also under pressure. By the way, Jay, did you uh, mention your targets for oil, a WTI yeah. or Brent? That's right. Uh, I, I have a uh, pending objective of about 91 for WTI and 96 for, uh, uh, you know, Brent. And, you know, uh, there is a, from, from medium to long term, I, I pointed this out in January, uh, there is a possibility that we may have begun the move towards 200 uh, plus for, for uh, Brent. And my, my original thesis was that we will first drop below, uh, uh, you know, $60 and then resume. I'm still not completely sure we have already started the move. But if we exceed 98, it's not going to stop at uh, $98. You're very, very likely looking at 200 plus for Brent. That uh, a move of such magnitude uh, is, is is driven by what? Driven by, or oh, that is of course beyond. Uh, but, but it's you know great, a very good gro a growth, a global growth, or or something else. Uh, I'm, 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 I'm not completely sure. It could be uh, you know escalation of the war, and or it okay. could be. Uh, uh, a, a, a misstep, a policy misstep by Fed or or the, one of the you know uh, big central banks uh, by okay. cutting rates when they should not be, and then inflation comes back and shoots up okay. beyond their uh, anticipated levels. So and okay. I, I know I, I just don't care about why I care about yeah. when and what. Yeah, price action is what you focus on, Jaya. Thank you very much for joining us.